And welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to another week, another edition of the Sparkling Tuna Cup number 36. Ah, uh, I'm joined Let's by <laughs> I'm joined by someone I haven't casted with in years, Poppy. Not just Asher, bro, but the star of the show. Uh, Rufio Rufio. As well. yeah. He's very offended that I touched him. <laughs> Let me go back to sitting quietly. <laughs> oh my god, it's been a while since we casted Asha. I missed you, Papi. I missed you, but it's good to see you here. It's good to see you back. And mate, we have a stacked bracket this week. Oh, yeah, the cranky tournament is popping off, and uh, we're gonna be jumping right into it with um, maybe a little bit of an unfortunate matchup to be getting in round one, but a bit of a banger nonetheless. And here we are in the top right, one of the best players that we've got here today. This is Starlight Twinkles Wayne. And spawning in the bottom left hand corner, we have his opponent. We have representing Berserker Esports, the German Terran player. It is Battle B. And uh, as you mentioned, it's a little bit rough here. Wayne, he is a Sparking Tuna Cup champion. He has competed in our events a couple of times. Battle B hasn't really shown up too often here. So uh, because of that, the, the seeding is it's a little bit rough, Bobby. It's a little bit rough. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's a little bit sad. I mean, Battle B is a player I'm really excited to watch. And he is definitely the caliber of player that can beat Wayne in a best of three. Mm -hmm. But uh, these are two players that really could make a very deep run here. So to get each other so early, it's a little bit unfortunate, but it's nice for us. I mean, we get a banger of a game to start off with. Yeah, screw the players. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna be really excited about this as well. Uh, really interesting opener. Wayne did go for a pool first, by the way. Oh, we see why. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's Wayne. Yeah, so pull first straight into the Rage War and most likely just going to be a five Rage pressure here and it's going to be really important that Battle B gets the proper scouting going uh, as he does send that first SCV across the map. Yeah, the SCV is going to be coming in. Does confirm the link, so he's aware of the pool first. He ignores the links, goes straight on in, and again, he does confirm the hash timing at least, but he doesn't quite go all the way into the main base, so he's not fully aware of what is going on in the main of Wayne. Yeah, we're going to have to wait and see what he decides to do. It looks like, uh, hopefully he's going to be sending his Reaper across. He might just be trying to track those links that are hunting down at that first uh, SCV there. But yeah, there we go. He is going to be sending the Reaper across. Very important that he gets a scout of what's going on. And behind this, we'll probably be going for a second Marine as well. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Second Marine is on the way. So far, good stutter stepping as well. The links, they haven't gotten too much damage. And as you mentioned, very important that the Reaper is making its way across. But the Marine will Ooh. go down, unfortunately. Yep, definitely very unfortunate there. The Reaper is, looks like, just skirmishing with the Queen there a little bit. The Queen's going to come out, try to clear the way for these Roaches to sneak on through without the Reaper seeing them. Uh, looks like they have been revealed. And what is going to be the reaction from Battle B? I haven't seen a bunker start up quite yet, but yep, he's going to start on the high ground. So he isn't going to die to this, but there's a good chance it's going to put him pretty far behind. Yeah, exactly. It's going to contain him here to two bases. We could maybe pick off a deep or two as well, especially with this Overlord over towards the right-hand side as Roaches are about to arrive. And as you said, at least Battle B shouldn't die to this. Yeah, he's got that tech lab up and going, so we can get a Cyclone going, and that's exactly what he's going to be doing here. And he should be able to keep this bunker safe. Uh, he's definitely going to lose a little bit here and there. And the main thing is he's just not getting to mine from the natural exactly as the natural orbital is finally getting back up and running good control out of Wayne he does pull back the weakened roach does turn it into that ravager as well looks like one depot will go down and he may be looking to get the second depot as well yeah that depot is definitely in trouble these SCV is going to start to get picked off at at the same time he is continuing to put on a little bit of pressure on the CC so both of these depots are going to be going down and considering that it's only the investment of five roaches and Wayne's been droning behind this that is not bad at all yeah, exactly. I mean, there was some good target firing there, and he at least kills two of the roaches in the end, so that's something. But as you mentioned, Wayne, he's just getting into this economically, saturating his natural base, getting his third base up and running as well. The third is a little bit delayed, but I don't think that Battle B can really counterattack anytime soon. He's at least getting an Overlord, though. Yeah, he's going to get an Overlord for that uh, for that Cyclone there. Actually going for a second Cyclone as well and delaying his stop up by quite a bit. So he's not going to be able to send these across the map without the use of a Medivac. But uh, at the same time, he, he has held. So uh, I think he'll be going straight into Stim behind this. 
Yeah, just to try to catch up and try to keep up here as we do have that add-on swap. A couple of Hellions are on the way for map control uh, back at home. Additional gases are being taken. Lair is on the way. And this should just be for a Roach setup here for Roach speed uh, for maybe even eventual 1-1 one, one as well. Wayne, we didn't really get to talk too much about it, but he is known uh, to be uh, as being one of the more aggressive Zerg players out there. So, yeah, he did already show us that uh, as he is going down his Evo Chambers. Yeah, the chamber gonna Evo Chamber gonna be going down here. Uh, behind this, we're just having Cloak Banshees coming out from Battle B. These are gonna be a little bit delayed, but at the same time, he does have his three CC setup, so just kind of trying to get himself back to a familiar position here, and uh, especially if he can get some uh, harass going across the map with those Hellions and Ban with the Hellions and Banshees. It's going to at least help him to uh, keep track of what Wayne's up to here. Yeah, hopefully he doesn't lose too much too quickly. Um, because just because of the awkward opener, there aren't that many Hellions. There isn't that much of a presence that Battleby can have on the map. So he has to be that much more careful with what little he has. Um, and again, I do think it's a bold move to commit here to these Cloak Banshees. But we'll see if they can get something done uh, as Wayne is throwing down some safety sport crawlers. Yeah, spawn of the spawn of the third and natural already done, so he's going to be well and truly uh, prepared for these later banshees. At the same time, Battle B just trying to get out on the map, trying to get an idea of what Wayne is up to. There is still a few different directions he could be going for, uh, going to from here. It could be a one-one roach attack. It could just be uh, some more standard macro off the back of the roaches, kind of like what we've been seeing Serral doing, just using the roaches to safely get into Hive Turk. Yeah, and that's why it's really interesting to see that Wayne didn't go double Eva Chamber, right? He's only got Carapace on the way, which means he can still, like, try to transition into a more of a Ling Bane heavy composition. I'm curious to see how hard he commits here to just pure Roach. Yeah, definitely. And, I mean, behind this as well, seeing that he's getting uh, the Overlord speed as well is kind of throwing me for a loop. I wonder if he's thinking about going for a Queen Drop here. Yeah, that is a big possibility. I mean, he has a lot of queens, and there we go. As you say it, we have the Dropper Lords on the way. Wayne going for a big timing here. This is going to hit with plus one carapace, and Wayne so far is in the dark as to what's going on. He didn't scan, but he didn't miss the Dropper Lords. Yeah, for Battle B, this is going to be very tough to be able to hold on to his third. And uh, I think for Wayne as well, this doesn't necessarily have to kill Battle B. Uh, it's looking pretty scary, but if he can just push him off a third and just continue to uh, progress behind that, uh, it's going to be a good way for him to get towards the victory oh. there. But yeah, these queens are going to really help with pushing back the Banshees. Battle B doing a great job just sniping down a Ravager here. Any of these Ravagers that he can snipe down are going to make his tank so much more potent later on. Yeah, exactly. He only has one tank back at home so far. Good zoning with these queens as well as Wayne does ferry his units across the map. Oh, he's heavily supplied. Look, six Overlords were in production, so not the most ideal position here for Wayne as he is pushing towards that natural. Yeah, he's going straight for the natural, going for the kill here is Wayne, and Battle B immediately trying to pull those SEVs, doesn't get the repair on the bunker, so he is in some trouble here. Yeah, the Biles, they took down one of the Banshees, they took down the tank as well, big Biles did connect, the bunker goes down, and Wayne is busting into the natural base, there is one more tank here in the back line, but that's a lot of roaches. Yeah, Wayne gonna see what he can get done here. If worst case scenario, he doesn't get to break the natural here. He is also cutting Battle B off from defending his third, but uh, for now he is continuing to put that pressure on this one at Metavac working absolutely overtime to try to heal up the bio. Exactly. And now it looks like Wayne has reckoned. Oh, he backs off for a moment. He's going to be spending some creep. He's going to be able to transfuse with those queens as well. Pick off whatever he can. Another depot goes down. Some of the production is under threat as well as he's waiting for reinforcements, waiting for more roaches. And he does have plus one on the way as well. Yeah, he is continuing to commit to the pressure here, which is very interesting. Uh, quite a lot of the times we've seen when Serral is doing builds like this, uh, once he does deny the third and push the Terran back into their natural, he will just try to outgrow them while spreading creep outside their base. But no, Wayne is going for the kill here. Yeah, exactly. The tank goes down once again. There's barely anything left here at the natural base of Battle B. He pulls the boys. He has a lot of Marines and Marauders, but again, he just doesn't have enough to break as opposed to the tank finally does go down. Yeah, the Biles from Wayne are fantastic, and there is just not enough there for Battle B. GG is called, and Wayne with a dominating game at one, and kind of controlling things from start to finish. GG, well played. And that's just as how Wayne likes to play out this matchup and play in general as well. Again, he is known to be a player that really does dictate the pace of the game. He's one of the more aggressive Zerg players out there in the land of Europe. Uh, we don't have too many of them. A lot of them are a little more you know standard and macro and, and correct in their play but but wayne stands against them
Yeah, I, I do think in general, just at this level of Zerg, it's quite unusual to have Zergs who don't play passive for the first eight, nine minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of think of Solar as like the most classical Zerg, where he's mm -hmm. just opening up standard, letting the Terran kind of do their thing, defending everything, and then taking over the game in the mid game. And that's sort of what I think of when I think of top level Zergs. But yeah, Wayne does things a little different. He does. That's why I always appreciate a new casting whenever we can. But here we go. We're getting into game number two and spawning in the top left hand corner of Babylon. We have the Blue Zerg player representing Starlight Twinkle. It is Wayne. And spawning in here in the bottom right hand corner of the map for Berserker. This is the Red Terran Battle Bear. We go and again we can get into the bracket a little bit later on uh, once we do wrap up the series there's a lot to go over and a lot of matches to cover um but i do appreciate at least that this time oh never mind i was gonna say that this time we won't be seeing we'll be getting a longer game uh wayne once again going for the pool first and i mean we could still be seeing a longer game i've always been a real proponent of in series uh making all your builds look similar so i do think if you're gonna play pool first it only really makes sense if you're also playing macro pool first. Uh, so we'll see if Wayne wants to play off that, or it is possible that Wayne just thought that the five roach response from Battle B wasn't good enough to mm -hmm. not put him ahead again. Mm -hmm. uh, ooh, okay. No, okay, it's the same gas timing. I, I didn't see the hatch. I was like, ooh, is this like a early gas Ravager's Flood? Um, but no, it is just going to be... At least so far, the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so far. And I mean, that also makes sense, right? It's like if, hey, if you do an opener, if you do a build, and if it works wonders in game one, why not do it again? Especially if you feel confident enough that you can pull it off. So we'll see if he can do so. We'll see if Battle B can adjust and adapt and have a better reaction to it as well with this SCV scout, with the eventual Reaper scout as well. Oh, we're getting into it as well. Thank you. I want to call it Oni Dancer. Oni Dancer in the chat for the subscription in seven months oh let's thank you get very there. much <laughs> glad you're enjoying your night uh gracias Bobby. gracias you take care of yourself uh good to hear that you're hammered i guess <laughs> yeah uh but thank you so much for resubscribing there were a couple of subscriptions that I, and i guess i should shout them out as well um there was also uh chileno singaporean earlier today thank you so much uh and also a shout out as well to c grail in the chat for also resubscribing so thank you all three of you for for the support we, we appreciate it. We appreciate it. I was trying to work out if it's Pony Danza or Oni Danza, but I was thinking of. Um, did you ever watch called Pure Onich? Yes. Like the old web series with yeah, the yeah. boom headshot, boom headshot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That there's was... that whole thing in that where there's own, but it's spelled with a P, and it's like, no, man, yeah. you pronounce it like own. If you say pwn, you're just a noob, man. <laughs> yeah, pwn, that was a big thing in the early 2000s. That was like the, the internet lingo of the day. That was, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I remember in Dota All Stars as well, when you played it on the Warcraft client, Yeah. if you killed someone, it would say you pwned their head. <laughs> This is where I'm adding myself for a little bit. Uh, my my ID, my online ID, it, it did have a little bit of evolution over time. And in the early 2000s, it wasn't like VIP. It was like Pwn. Oh. Was... <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. There you go. Aye, aye, aye. Good times. Pwn era. Good times. <laughs> Oh, God. But, uh, yeah, so far, Wayne did go for a pull for us, but you called it, right? It's like, it's good to mix things up, and he did not go for an early Roach one. The Lings didn't really do too much damage, and Battle B, he's going to have a much more comfortable early game. Yeah, that kind of worked out perfect for Wayne in terms of he did deny the scout of the Roaches with his Lings. Uh, Battle B did opt this time to send his SCV into the main after getting rushed that first time, but uh, it does look like the build of Battle B hasn't been too disturbed. I believe he's actually gone for a Starpotless build. It's going to be a 3cc 2 on 1. There we go. 3cc 2 on 1 from Battle B. You do love to see it. Likewise, he's also going to be mixing things up as well. Uh, back at home, Wayne, he's just going to be droning, saturating his bases. He uh, hasn't seen too much yet, but he does have an Overlord poised to go in and there we go making a beeline straight for that main base we'll get eyes on the cc as well as the timing of the starport yeah seeing the cpc definitely important and that delayed starport is going to help him put together the entire picture of what's going on here uh we do see a pretty early safety bay nest coming down for wayne as well 
Yeah, exactly. He's going to be delaying his lair as a result. So a little bit paranoid. But there we go. As soon as he realizes what's going on, he cancels the Bailey Nest. He throws down two Evo Chambers, takes his gases as well. And he's going for a much more greedy response here. Aware that he has a little bit of time to himself before his opponent is too active on the map. Yeah, that's right. With these uh, two-on-one builds, three CC ones, especially if we're not seeing four or six Hellions going into Hellbats, it's pretty safe to put your Bane Nest off for quite a long time. Yeah, just going to be a little bit unnecessary here. And again, good of Wayne to recognize that, to respond with that. Now he's working on his upgrades. Lair is now on the way. And finally, Battle B is going to be active here with these Medivacs. He's soon to be moving out on the map. The Hellions, likewise, are going to be leading the charge as well. Just kind of poking and prodding and getting eyes on that third base. Yeah, that's right. So there we go. The Ling's just going to be clearing out these rocks. We have 1-1 one, one on the way. The Bane Nest is started back up, but just prioritizing those upgrades over anything else. And we are going to be having that little flood of Ling's just to prepare for the 2-1-1 one, one here. So it looks like Wayne knows exactly what's going on with the build of Battle Beer. Yeah, exactly. As a drop is going to be coming in. Rocks are being cleaned up, so it's going to make, make defense here a little bit easier here to be able to surround this upper location. Marines have arrived, but there are plenty of queens and lings in position. Wayne shouldn't really be losing too much of anything here. Yeah, pretty much. This is looking like a very solid defense, and we've got that Bane speed on the way as well. Uh, plenty of queens, plenty of lings. This is a textbook defense so far from Wayne, and he's looking very comfortable. Uh, we also see a little bit of a supply block coming out for Battle B. He's not going to be to put off by this but uh just needs to make sure that he's getting everything coming along smoothly because wayne is a very tough opponent of course yeah he really is and wayne is going to be able to get up to three base economy he's got a fourth on the way we have a double jump into the main base but not quite able to kill too much as wayne is able to keep up with his lings and he's honestly taking up even further going straight for the infestation bit gonna be going straight for that hide yeah, I like it. I actually think Ultras can be very good against this sort of playstyle if he does eventually go into that. Uh, just because there's not really um, too many different things. I mean, I mean, this usually leads into a mass marine sort of play. It's going to take quite a while for Battle B to get into those Marauders, to get into Ghosts eventually, or any kind of late game transition. So uh, I do think Wayne can cut a few corners here and try to get earlier into Hive Tech. Yes, especially if he does read that Battle B won't be going for any kind of big committed three base play um, as Wayne goes straight for that hive as well for Adrenal, could be for Ultras, Vipers as well. Battle B is being active once again here, pushing through the center of the map with the more kind of robust army this time. Um, but the rocks have been knocked down and Wayne does have Ling and Bailing ready for this. Yeah, this area is looking very open. I appreciate that Battle B is doing a fantastic job clearing out the creep and he is pushing the creep right back into the third of... Uh, Wayne actually being very aggressive here, and I think Wayne might not have been ready for this to be hitting so soon. Yeah, exactly. Very adventurous tank there as the tank does survive as well, getting a couple of extra shots in. Yeah, that was a little bit indecisive from Wayne. He is going to be jumping in through the back here, trying to pick up some reinforcements, maybe clear out that tank as well, but that was a little bit miscontrolled. At the same time, those 17 SCVs going down, even clearing out the rally. This is beautiful stuff from Wayne. Yeah, Wayne, he can attacks. He catches the reinforcements as well. At the same time, Battle B has been doing well with his push, but as you mentioned, he just lost his mineral line. He just lost his economy. There's a little more pressure on Battle B to get damage done. Yeah, as long as Wayne can keep the tank count down here, he should be okay. This can only start to get really scary once we've got two or three tanks here really pushing up against that base. But at least for now, with only the single tank, he shouldn't be in too much trouble. He can just wait things out. Yeah, exactly. As more Bailings are being produced as well. Once again, another Ling Rumba. A Bailing Rumba here at that third base, crippling the economy of a battle be forcing him all in in a way as he's down to 45 workers. Yeah, beautiful stuff from Wayne, just slowly dipping in with units. I love these spores at the front as well. It's just going to be preventing the medevacs from coming forward with the marines and being a little bit more aggressive. Yeah, exactly. And it's just slowing him down. Another Ling run by just as the SCVs were transferred as well. So more workers are going down. It looks like we do have some reinforcers to deal with this, but more SCVs are falling here. Battle B is gaining ground, but he's still up against such a large amount of Ling Bane, even a Viper in production. Yeah, brilliant timing from Wayne with that run by, and he just needs to delay this until that Viper comes out. If he can throw down uh, that blinding cloud on these tanks and just surround this army, he should be absolutely fine. But it looks like he's going to be pulling the trigger now anyway. Yeah, and there were three tanks in position, but they're all going to get surrounded. There's not enough to support them. The Bailings are going to be rolling off of creep, and it looks like Wayne will clean this army up. 
Every tank goes down, and that is all Wayne needed. He can just back off now. There is no way these Marines can get in on top of the base without the support of those tanks. So Wayne is most of the way to clearing this out. Yeah, he is. The Queen's going to be holding the line. We only have Marines left over here for Battle B. A couple of medevacs as well. We can see how battered and bruised they are. They're all out of energy as well. That's how intense the fight has been. And as the game goes on longer, again, we just don't really have too much of an economy to speak of. So many workers went down, and Wayne, he's getting ready for another run by yeah, three more queens as well coming out from Wayne as he just continues to pump Ling Bane on 70 drones. So he is really treating this like an all-in. And uh, to be fair, he, he kind of has forced it to be an all-in. Denies the fourth, denies the mining at the third. Even getting on top of this tank at home, the bailings barely answered. And he will just be backing off at the end of that. This is some beautiful play from Wayne. And he is just removing all of Battle B's options. Like we were saying before, uh, Wayne loves to be in control of the game. And even while being attacked all in like this, he finds a way to put the game in his control. Yeah, regardless of what you do, he will attack you. He will <laughs> He will be in your face. Ultra Cavern is on the way. I don't know if we're going to be able to see the Ultras uh, at all, but we'll see. As um, The Bailing's going to be caught out, so a good catch here from Battle B at least. He is still mustering up an army. There is no 4CC though, and I don't really see one on the horizon, so Battle B still very committed. Yeah, and he's switching into mines, which is a little bit curious for me. It looks like he is going to be uh, not quite treating this as an all-in anymore, but trying to, you know, just play from behind, build up a little bit of attrition against his opponent, and uh, try to make sure that he can get that mining on his third safely done. But with these ultras in... Uh, on the way, I think he's going to be in some real trouble. Oh, yeah, exactly. As we do see him try to push on towards the right-hand side, Mind Shot's going to be going up. But again, the Queens are more than tanky enough. And we do have those Hive upgrades on the way. The Hive has been done for quite some time. And finally, Wayne can make use of it. Finally, his opponent has or was forced to back off. And he's getting into everything. And we will be seeing those Ultras. Yep, first few Ultras on the way. We do have plus three attack as well, but the game might just be over before that as we see a massive counterattack coming through the center of the map for Wayne. We have the Vipers in stock as well, but wow, big mind shot. Yeah, big mind shot does go off and the splits are pretty good as well from Battle B, but there's just so much links, so many bailings as well as we're just flooding everything across the map. GG gets called, it's too much, and Wayne will take the 2-0. BG, not a bad showing from Battle B, but Wayne just a little bit too strong. GG, exactly. Wayne is coming in as one of the favorites to take the entire tournament. And my condolences to Battle B. I mean, he ha he's a strong player. He had a good showing. Mm. Um, but again, Wayne is going to be difficult for anyone to go up against. Yeah. We're, we're sorry about the seeding battle, B. Please oh, come so back. Come, don't leave me, Papi. Don't pull a probe. Oh. <laughs> Play with us again. We'll give you Eva's Protoss. We'll give you Eva. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Eva was messaging me earlier today. He was like, why is it that the one time I sign up, Wayne signs up? Like, what's going on? I'm like, <laughs> have some confidence. What do you mean, Papi? What do you mean? <laughs> Shit. Right, he's on the other side of the bracket. You True. can face him in the grand final. Exactly, exactly. Uh, but uh, yeah, from there, we are going to be wrapping up this series. Wayne advances onto the quarterfinals, and we can take this moment to go over the bracket. Okay.